Hello there, we're doing another one of these. Um, this time it is this guy, I believe. Yeah, this guy. So, uh, this person is basically asking how they say they usually win their lane. So we're gonna skip for most of the laning. Uh, I'm sure there would be plenty for me to mention there, but whatever, they're Herald. Um, and they have trouble turning that lead into a victory, into a win. Um, I asked for a specific replay. They linked me here. Uh, the, the Luna in this game. So we'll be looking at this match. I can also take a look here. So I also I saw this fan game too. And I was tempted to look at it, but like 0 and 10 is not going to answer their question. Once again, clearly some lane problems, but whatever. Um, we're going we're gonna to look at the Luna match. Is this one. Um... So I think I mentioned this on the other guy. I I, I kind of recommend setting that um, solo queue only setting because you're solo queue. You're getting people who are partied, which means that like if, if you're gonna have you have this party on this guy isn't even in a party. His badge must be wrong. But you have parties. You have a party on like the other team where they have a dude who's um, Herald two and a Guardian. Right? This guy's not really Guardian. This guy's like Herald four, and his badge hasn't caught up yet. But can I see what server this is and unless that's the issue. Looks like Q times would be awful. US East now. Yeah, so I think changing that setting, just so like everyone in your game is gonna all be Herald 2 to Herald 4. Probably just makes things more reliable. You don't have to worry about some party coming in with like a Crusader and a Herald Zero, you know? So, we'll just lock on to your player perspective uh, and speed through the early game. Okay. Is everyone ready? Are you going to play the game? The build uh, seems reasonable. Uh, I'm not convinced of the level 1 stun. I'd just hold the level. I think if you don't need the stun, like some early fight. Oh look, even my guy, even my <laughs> the tooltip on whatever guy I have says uh, it says to get the your E because it's gonna help with last hitting. Uh, maybe you're gonna use this amazingly to secure last games. hits, but thirty seconds. I doubt it. But whatever. Let's go speed eight. Death, 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 I can pull up the pro, pro tracker and stuff, and I'm sure that on pro tracker it's like eighty percent going for the passive. But you got one last on the first wave, so. I'll just say once again, issues like that are fixing stuff like that's going to help a ton. But I don't really hate anything you're doing here. They have this warlock and bristle, so the lane's going to shove into you. So as long as you don't feed, this should be basically free farm. Just leave the lane alone for a wave and it'll be under your power. Nice. Yeah, this seems pretty much fine. Okay, getting more kills. And good enough farm, I'm sure you're like top of the, yep. Top of the last stitch chart of this MMR. Um, a, a pro game in a lane like this. They'd probably be closer to like 60, 70, 80, but uh, whatever. Okay, so you've now dipped out of lane. And you're just coming back to farm. I, I pretty much like this. Because um, once again, with their lane, you just want to farm the camps near the lane. Because they're always going to push it into tower, and then you can just go clear the wave under tower. Uh, let's go down to a more reasonable speed now. And see. Because you are coming out with pretty much top net worth. Nearly. Top 
So I, I don't. I find that a little questionable. I don't think you're gonna kill the bristle unless he's like tower diving or like super low HP. Um, and what are his items right now? Well, once he has Vanguard, um, even with the CMO, I I don't see it unless you have like some other stuns. Like if you had Kanka here, maybe, but. Are you getting dived? This is just Herald shit. Oh. <laughs> I, there's not really a... Let me see here. Why is it on his view? Okay, so you do theoretically see this coming. The visuals are bugged, so it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. But I just heard Brood, but I don't know if you can see that. But right now is where you can see it. I think this is going to be map awareness. So I'm going to assume here the two things that I'm probably going to talk about are like one map awareness and two uh, reducing the amount you fight. I would even say that um, trying to fight this lane was already probably questionable after like 11 or 12 minutes, uh, like or, like 10 or 11 minutes. Um, like I said, the game plan should be just like, Hit up these jungle camps and pop out to quickly clear this when it gets here. Um, it's a bit on your support. I don't know how communicative they are. They're here, but I can't see them because of visual bugs. But I, I just tell them to like go roam. And then your job is just to keep the tower from falling and get as much farm as you can. Um, I don't think you want to be like actively leaning against this bristle. I think, you, like I said, just like you kill this camp, kill this camp, kill this camp. Wave pushes in, you kill it, then like you go here, kill this camp, and then you should be back up, you kill this, kill this, kill this, clear the wave. And um, that way you're not, one, you're not sitting on the wave trading, burning your health and mana. Um, and uh, on the other hand, you're also not showing, right? So just, if you're just showing up for like five seconds to gank people a lot less, or to farm, you're a lot less likely to gank you. The lane farm is like technically the best farm on the map, but you can farm it quick. Um, and also, you, to farm it, you have to let the enemy team know where you are. Uh, but anyway, this guy shows here, and I'm going to assume your reaction time is not great. Yes, until it showed up on your screen, I don't think you were aware this was happening. Uh, back here, it was happening on your map. Um, generally, my advice is to spend some games just staring at your mini-map. So, like... Five games, ten games, maybe like every game for a week. You just stare at your mini map as much as possible, and then it starts to become a habit. Um, you know, I'll do the same thing eventually for like staring, staring at your clock, stuff like that. But I think staring at your mini map as much as possible. You could have just known this guy was here when you were here, and on you know, like farm this, maybe pinged it, and like if he dives, your team can help. Um, I still can't see the CM. There is a Kunkka teleporting or here. I, I don't know what's the mini map and what I'm seeing on my screen are disagreeing. Dyer's top tower is being attacked. So, even if this works out, this shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Kunkka shows up and sell a shit. And uh, this is why I would say that, especially at this level, I'd probably avoid team fights. I think everybody is too unreliable and bad uh, that you shouldn't fight unless there's very, very clear advantages. I think an even fight is like a total shit shoot 50-50 dice roll. Even a non-even fight, even if it's a 4v5, this guy can just miss his ult, you know? <laughs> and, and like that's not going to happen at IR ELO, but you have to rely on that here. He'll get his crystal maiden killed by just procking missiles back, you know? So, I would hope you don't just come back in lane. Okay, this is fine. So right now, um, I, I talked about this the other one. The lane's under tower. You you want to like rush over and get it because the last it's disappearing quickly. So I'm gonna hope after you finish this, you realize like, oh, there's these last hits disappearing. There's gonna be more, right? Your creep waves here, so they have a creep wave like here or something. Um, oh, it's actually gonna be here. So, there's a ton of creepers coming into the tower. Yeah, so I disagree with this. I think right after finishing this, maybe even before this, 
when you see the creep wave push again, you go farm the creep wave under tower. Um, it's the safe. It's the safest it's gonna be, and it's when it's all disappearing. So when you get there, the creep wave is basically dead. Um, and that could have been like three hundred gold in your pocket. Instead, you uh, or let's even just say two hundred. But instead, you got this creep camp here, which is probably like eighty gold. I don't know. Oops, I went too far back. So getting this, I don't mind, but and why is this so bugged? Yeah. So thirteen. I can't see it. At least five twenty-three. So you got like a hundred gold. You could have gotten twice as much as if you had just been over here taking that wave. Um, are you gonna get there for this wave? No, you're gonna miss this wave too. So. I think stuff like that is actually a big issue. You might be getting right now a, a lot of last hits, but I bet you're falling off on the net worth. Oh, you're still number one. Okay. Well, you could have been more number one, okay? <laughs> you could have gotten all that. That would have been 400 gold. Like, your Band of Elven skin would have been done. You would have been, like, a minute ahead on your farm. You actually missed ev everyone. Even the one you queued for, you missed. Really hard to tell with these visual bugs. Radiant's top tower is under siege. Dyer's bottom tower is being attacked. Dyer's structures are falling. Okay, they fortified, Dyer's but still. Tower under fire. You ended up missing all that. So that was um, two and a half creep waves, right? Like, each of these guys is worth, like, 50 or 60. Um, so you missed 10 creeps. Yeah, you missed down, like, 400 gold there to get 100 gold. Um, so I'd say that, once again, keep an eye on the minimap, keep an eye on like which lanes are pushed out, which lanes need to be pushed out. If you see a, a big double creep wave coming into your tower as a carry, that's like that should be really juicy and you want to be there. Um, okay, so minimap, again, uh, no wards, no enemies showing. Um, as far, you, the, the only thing you really know is Terrorblade was just here. Um, Theoretically, um, I don't know what's going on mid. Okay, so there are two people showing mid. The, probably, if I had to bet, there's like a mid standoff going on right now. But theoretically, there could be three, four people here. Let's go take a look at the enemy team. Bristleback is disconnected because it's Herald. Okay, so Brood and Terrorblade are right here. Once again, they could have easily been here. but They are there. You're fine. But this should be alarm bells for you. And that's why it would have made more sense to farm the wave, push the wave out, and then go farm these. Not go farm these, then go push the wave out, because now you're in a kind of weird spot. You can farm these, but it's, uh, once again, even this is really sketchy when you don't know where anyone on the enemy team is. Um, I guess if I had to, because in my brain, the whole enemy team's running at me right now. <laughs> Uh, I'd clear this and then like maybe go farm this or this or just go through the portal the other side of the map, but I, I'd just be terrified right now the longer I don't see them. So yeah, I'd be scared. I'd be afraid to walk here. I think these are all this like high risk place for no reason. Um, and I don't even think you know you're at risk, but there's nobody showing on the map. You, you have zero information. So taking farm alone on their side of the map where you you were just showing sketches me out a ton. Um, once again, maybe they're not doing anything about it. Yeah, they aren't. But they could. It's high risk, and it's the kind of stuff that this is going to bite you in the ass like once or twice a game, at least, I think. Okay, so you're showing on this wave again. Um, at least this time, you see there's shit going on mid. So now, uh, this is something BSJ talks about, where the urgency of what you need to do scales with the information. So their entire team's mid. Bristle's disconnected. Brood just died. There's three people mid. So either you try and get here, which you should not. You do not have ult. So I, will, I hope I do not see you run to mid. Um, instead, you should just hit this tower. Um, you can create a lot of pressure, maybe at half the health off the tower, maybe get the tower, um, maybe f force a buyback or, or something, because there, there's this fight mid. Um, and then even if your team loses mid, you'll probably get the tower, because it's going to take them so long to clear, clear your team out. So that's what you should do. There should be, now you have a lot of information, as opposed to where you had none back here. There should be urgency to do something 
It should not be joining this fight, so it should be pushing this tower. I don't want to see you farm this jungle camp, and I don't want to see you uh, join this fight. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, you run over to join the fight. This is totally wrong. You have no ultimate. You don't want to be fighting on a Luna with no ultimate. So you could have just gotten two waves, pushed the tower. You're getting in this room, like, what's going to do? You're going to do... You're gonna, okay, and you broke out of it anyway. But like, you're gonna walk up invis and st stun someone for zero point six seconds. Like, no. And now you're like stuck in that herald mid standoff. You could have had this. T you honestly probably could have had this tower. And either because either yeah, they have to like TP this guy out or something. Um, in which case, like your team's gonna it helps your team win the fight. Um, so now you're once again stuck in the weird Herald mid standoff thing. You finally back off and get some farm. And this is another, like, there's high information. You should be doing something active. You seem a bit, um, like, lost. You're like, oh, I guess I'll go farm this. Oh, there's a fight. I guess I'll join the fight. This should just be a hard roll in your head, bro. If you have no ult, you shouldn't fight. <laughs> Straight up. I, I would even say until your ult's level 2, because you, you level it back to back, I assume. Um, but if you're if you're leveling like this, fighting is not what you should be doing at all. So you should just be... If there's a fight going on, you should go get lane farm and push a wave and pressure a tower. <laughs> Radiant's bottom tower is being attacked. Okay. Getting the stack off, pretty good. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but it was good. If it is on purpose, then you're doing better than a lot of heralds. Okay. I can't really pay attention to the map at this speed. But that's all. That, that was also, I'll say, questionable, because there was two people showing, one was in your lane, and you walk up the high ground, you go farm a wave that their carry is already farming, um... I generally assume the carry has backup if if he's farming is like well there's not much going on so if I see the carry farming then, um, once again at least you have an ult this time uh, but it's not level two this isn't nearly as bad uh, this is a bit of an awkward fight because you guys are like fighting down in the river against people uphill but the Jakiro landed some sick abilities uh, does Kunkka have torrent storm already that's crazy okay Yeah. So I don't mind this a lot better. So now, uh, oh crap, I just completely changed the time. I didn't mean to do that. For two minutes. So now you have uh, your ult down for a minute and a half. It's fine right now. Once the team respawns, I'd want to see you just go farm. Uh, maybe because you have vision here. Uh, just go like farm through their jungle if you can farm aggressively You generally want to always be farming as aggressively as you can within reason and here I would say that's like farming their jungle because then you're taking away their farm if a fight happens like and it's looking real good Maybe you can get here or if it's looking real bad. You can easily swap to top and push in top so That's probably what you should do here while your ults down So their whole team is up now. Let's see what you do. Okay, you go to push in this tower. So generally, uh, this will probably end up fine because you guys have a huge net worth lead and stuff. But uh, you don't really want to push towers unless it's free. Um, it's it's pretty high risk, even non high ground. Um, it can be a pretty big risk to push a tower when like, I mean, if you look at it, your team they're missing two ults. The enemy team is only missing one ult. So they're going to have more ults than you in this fight. Oh, sorry, you guys are missing three. So you guys used all your ults in that last fight. This is not really a free tower. You're going to theoretically come in here um, and, and get ulted by everyone. So, and we'll see how this goes. I don't fully agree with this because it's not totally free. You guys have pretty good vision for this. You can play around this uh, and pressure this. Maybe you can go grab a Roche. Um, or something like that. Like, there could be stuff to do. Uh, if their team was good, they could have all TP'd in. Like, so I kind of predicted that they wouldn't. Yeah. 
Dyer's top tower mm. is destroyed. They could have done a team fight there. Oh. I'm not even sure what's happening here. Brissalis got... Oh, sorry, hiccups. Brissalis got caught out. So. And once again, you see two long cooldowns go. The Bristle is kind of worthless. Uh, he was disconnected for a while. He's their lowest net worth core. I don't know what's his KDA 2 and 4. So I'd still be a little sketched out about pushing high ground here. Um, we'll see. Um, okay, yeah, 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 I pretty much agree with this. Radiance bottom tower under fire. Okay, you get vision of their triangle here. Your sports are actually doing really good with this aggressive vision. And, um, oh, those are manta illusions. Okay, we can also pay attention to what you're doing with the manta illusions. I generally basically just use the manta illusions to shove lanes. Uh, because once again, the lane farm is the best farm, but it's the most dangerous. So, Ed pushing in the lanes in itself is a good thing as far as like giving vision, pressuring the enemies. You know, if you pressure pre uh, push a lane into their tower, someone has to come, they have to show. Uh, then you know, like that that person, you know, can't be helping this guy. You know, if you if you have your manta illusions push this wave in, well, you go this way. Let's say this is all theoretical, but um, then someone someone has to come and deal with this, and then that's one less person that could be helping this guy while you gank him. Stuff like that. So. It seems like you're just like sending them for vision or sending them to farm jungle camp so you farm the wave. Um, I, and every now and then I use them for vision, but rarely. Um, but I kind of think that should be backwards. You should go farm the jungle where you just, uh, put this ward down where you have great vision and let your illusions go push this all the way up to their high ground. Being attacked. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower under fire. Um, okay, this should be fine for you. Yeah, yeah you didn't even need... Uh, I will say on the Brood, your ult doesn't matter, because uh, your ult's not going to hit her, but you kind of mess her up with the, everything else in your kit. Yeah. This I find questionable, and I'm actually happy to see her backing off of this. I don't know, you might have baited Kunkka in. We'll see, but... Even if, like, even if you had stayed, this is theoretically like a 2v4. Um, but I, I think just stunning that guy and like posturing up might have baited your Kanka. I don't know. We'll see if he gets out. He probably should. He should be pretty tanky. Yeah, now your team's taking this bad fight. Because Ogre is not here. I don't think Jakiro's here. I don't see him on the map at all. Where is he's invisible here? <laughs> what? Oh, he actually has an invis rune, so he's not okay. Okay, I see. He is really faint. But yeah, this is uh, possibly a 3v4. Um, and it's a 3v4 against Kanka, who, who has no ult now. So it's like your ult, CM's ult. Let's see. Yeah, a, a, a big waste of time. Um, and that's just once again looking at your mini map and just counting, really. Uh, at least Terrorblade's bottom, so it was a 3v3. He did not know that at the time. He could have TP'd back. So I'd once again, uh, I'd, I would have just spawned uh, the Manta style illusions and sent them to go shove in this lane. Or if you know where the creep wave is, shove in uh, bot lane because this uh, it's about to spawn right so you could have uh, spawned illusions sent them here and then they kill the wave when it gets there in like five seconds so pretty much on cooldown if I'm not planning to fight anytime soon uh, which you shouldn't right your team's all split up in Kanka uh, well he had used this all like a spec up but still your team was all split up you're not going to be um within the next 30 seconds in a team fight. Just use your illusions, push out a wave. It's good for map control, it's good for farm. Okay, this looks like it should be really good. Just gotta watch the swap. Um, you're now super low on mana. So, theoretically need to do something about that. Maybe these, they're all there. 
So I'd like to see you go over there, grab those. If you want to go f crazy, <laughs> to do some backpack tricks to get a little extra regen out of it, but I doubt we'll see that. But you could honestly, if you do grab these, it looks like you're not. So I don't know if you've really addressed the... You did get mana booted, it looks like, or Guardian Grieved. But for me, as a carry, I'm sitting at a third mana. That's like a problem I'm trying to solve, unless I'm farming the most passive way possible. You also spawned... Wait, when did you spawn these illusions? That's a bizarre place to send them. Okay, so you used your illusions for this fight. And what do you do with them? You sent them there. So I would have sent them up the lane. I don't uh, know how you control your illusions. Let me see if I can find the setting. Uh, there is unified orders with control. So I really like this for controlling these like Manta illusions and stuff. So um, this means if you're holding control and you like do a right click, every unit under your control other than the courier is going to go to where you right click. You can also do an A left click and attack move uh, while holding control and they'll do that. So you would just like control a left click on your minimap up to their base and then just let go of control and go around about your life. So then your illusions will go do an attack move towards their base, pushing out the wave, and then you go about your life. And it's like two clicks. You don't even need to look. You just a click on your minimap here or something. Your, your illusions will push that out. But th then you send them here. Because honestly, these illusions can get you hundreds of last hits a game, but I don't think the way you're using them, they can. Because almost every time I feel like you're sending the illusions to do what I think you should be doing, and then you're going to do what I think the illusions should be doing. It's like, you sent the illusions to farm this, well, you went here. And it just should have been the other way. Uh, and then, like, there was a missed micro, and you sent them over to the pool, which is where I thought you should, I thought you should have gone to the pool. Uh, how much mana is this thing? I don't know if you should be using this thing to farm. I'd have to... I Now, I'm no Luna expert. I would check uh, pro replays. I severely doubt that they're spending 10% of their mana on this when they're probably killing this camp. Damage. Like It's going to make you kill the camp half a second faster. Probably not worth whatever 10% of your mana. Radiance top tower is being attacked. Okay, this guy's here. I mean, you should be able to like really fuck this guy up if if you can land the stun. It's I'm sure it's probably very annoying to stun him and all this, but I think you probably just melt this guy. Um, hit him spawn your illusions. Um, I would. I don't think I'd mask of madness because you want to once you kill the spiders alt. But we'll see. You land the uh, the stun, but then you don't go on him. Uh, and this is one of those, like, you don't have the most information, as in just the hood shown, but you have vision of, like, a whole ring around him. This team really can't be here without you knowing about it. And you have Kunkka backing you up, so if you can, like, hold the guy back long enough, I think you should have man-fought that guy, but... I don't think there was any reason to let him get away with that and live. Okay, so generally I'd just be trying to farm near my team now. Uh, and I probably would have like taken the camp. Be greedy. Um, it's honestly also good if you're a little behind your team. You're not the initiator here, right? Uh, the Kunkka, I guess, is your initiator or like the Jakiro. What everyone else has longer stuns than you better stuns. So I'd just like farm this. If a fight does break out, yeah, maybe you get there three, four seconds late. That's also kind of a good thing. You get there after they've uh, used some stuns and slows and stuff. Um, and, you, and you can just clean up. You don't have to be there when the fight first starts and, you know, Warlock's ulting and Bristle's using his ags on everyone. Right? You get there after that's all happened. Because <laughs> now, yeah, now it's it's weird. It's like, oh, I want to farm. I want this farm. I want that farm. I'll walk back and forth. You spawn your Manta. I disagree with this. So we were talking earlier about, like, is there a chance there's going to be a fight? Uh, you guys are walking up to take over their triangle. Everyone's up. They know you're here. You know they're here. You're taking this thing. There's a very high likelihood of a fight. In that case, you want to hold the Manta to get rid of a Silence or something, which Brood should have a Bloodthorn. She does not have a Bloodthorn. <laughs> okay, weird freaky Brood build. She can do a Diffusal Blade. <laughs> 
There's no way that's right. Okay. Uh, I guess they have nothing to Manta off. So you're fine on that, but still. Um, so we'll see what you do with the illusions. Uh, you send them to go farm mid while you farm here. That's fine. Once it, I'd be like farming this and this and this. And if a fight does break out, you can still be there in like six seconds, eight seconds. Because now you're going to come here and your whole team's going to be trying to farm this camp. And you're, you're really getting nothing. But. Okay, and then let's see if you manage the illusion micro. Oh, they despawned anyway. And that seemed fine. Um. I don't love this. No vision at all. This is once again, oh, and they have vision, great. This, um, I would say, is very questionable. Even before I knew, because they have amazing vision here. They have vision of this, they have vision of this. They're all up, and this is another one of those, like, don't try and take towers unless they're free. You need to have ogre here. Um, I could very easily see this being, like, a fight that goes awful for you guys. Once again, there's a chance, because it's Herald, they just give you the tower for free. If they fight over this tower, um, the only thing going in your favor is you guys have all your ults up. Okay. They, ha they have amazing vision, you guys see nothing. Dyer's bottom tower is in pieces. Dyer's bottom tower is being attacked. Um, I'm just so sketched out by this vision situation. Your team has a one ward and it's here, and that does not support this play style. Of people being here. You guys are standing under their ward. I don't know if CM's not about to deward that she doesn't have a ward. Um yeah. I'm very sketched out about everything your team's done in the last like minute. Since your ward fell here, this all got very sketchy. It works out fine because it's Herald, but Radiance Top Tower is under siege. Okay, send those guests from the lane, I like. Mine. So, fish. so, and you have a TP here. You you are, like, a little too far away from your team, I'd say. Once again, everyone on your team has their ults up. Your team's, like, starting to put vision up here. Um, I would theoretically want you to at least teleport here and, like, farm this ancient camp and this ancient camp. Uh, farming these camps... You're just too far away. If, so, if something happens, even if something happens here, you have to either TP to this tower, which is really far away, or TP here, which is going to be a long TP, and you're probably like 15 seconds away from being able to help them. Like I, I, I it, it depends game to game what that like sweet spot is of how late you want to get to the fight, but this feels like a little much. Um, I'll say if it, seeing Brood here makes me think they could feasibly in some world be Roaching. I don't know if that's what they're doing, but maybe yeah, this guy's just being caught out. And that's another thing. You guys could be roaching. Another thing I'll say, if you're worried about throwing big leads um, in Herald, just get roach every time before you high ground. Um, no, you guys haven't gone for either of these objectives. Oh, apparently this got taken at some... These, these are getting taken and I didn't notice. <laughs> Is the other team doing them? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe my thing's bugged. Okay, so once again, there is now a fight developing up top. The Brood got out. She'll be healing and coming back. Now we've seen Hoodwink. We've seen a Warlock. Um, there is a Terrorblade here, so I guess in that sense, both the carries are here. Uh, I'd be a little sketched out about man fighting this Terrorblade just because he can health swap you and fuck you up. Right, uh, you don't really have a defense against. Is this thing BKB piercing? No, so you, you have to BKB when when he's getting low health. If you go on him, you could. Um, you know where Brood, Hoodwink, and Warlock are. So worst case scenario, this Bristol Bristol should top. So you, you should probably go on this guy, uh, and then just BKB once he's like below half health, so he can't swap you. I think this is too passive. This is another one of those. You have a ton of information right now, so there's a lot of urgency. Um, and the urgency should be, hey, I can probably just solo kill this guy because I mean, if we look at the net worth, you are six k. Uh, you have a six k net worth lead over this guy. You're not pushing it. Um, 
and I would get playing scared if you had no information, right? If you had no vision on your map, this would make sense. But you have a lot of vision, you know, everyone, you know, three people are here. A brood mother is here, here with no health. You can just kill this guy. Um, and now you start, but it's too late. Your hero doesn't have the best catch. So now brood's here. And I think once again, you're too scared. I think you can probably 2v1 these guys. Um, I feel like you should have been able to get a kill and make something happen there. Because um, you know this brood is alone, near death, alone. So she can't fight you. She ran away from you. I I, I don't love this because there's no way you can help top. And if you just go farm these camps, like, man, maybe you go through the portal. Okay. It's not the worst. Um, it, you guys are heading towards high ground, which I don't love. I think just grab the Roche, be safe. His ones get fights and Herald are very unreliable. Okay, you do want to grab Roche. On, uh, <laughs> I will say I don't feel like I'm watching Herald, but your team does not want to come with you. What can you do? So is your team just going to go high ground and throw? I'm confused how this turns into a loss. Okay, CM's just blind following you. Your team's pushing high ground without you. If your team, if your team's not coming with you and they're pushing high ground, you gotta be there with them. Um, we'll see. I don't know what the communications were like. If they're like, oh, we just want to get a glyph and then we'll come. But trying to solo Roche while your team tries to three ban high ground is disastrous. Um, even if taking Roche is the right call, and I agree, it is the right call. Um. I think on a high ground push like this, you can't, your team can't be split like this. And your CM has followed you, right? Your CM has followed your call. So the CM is not with them. So now they're 3v5ing up the high ground. This could totally be where the game gets thrown. Yep. Oh. It's still, okay, it's bad. I was going to say it's not awful. That's still bad. You got the bristle for. <laughs> <laughs> for their carry, getting two kills on the course, yeah. I don't know if you needed to get out there. You maybe could have saved someone, but it's, it's whatever. I, I think generally, the bigger issue was, one, you couldn't convince your team not to high ground there. It was a bad time to high ground. You need some advantage. Like, even now, if you could have had a double damage... A double damage is enough for me to say, okay, let's go break high ground. A Roche is enough. A uh, pickoff's enough. But there was nothing there. Um, there was, like, their whole team's up. And three people are going to go alone high ground. Um, so I don't know how you communicated to them. It could be a communication thing. Maybe they didn't listen. But I'd be drawing, like, I'd be saying, like, no, don't go. We should Roche. Be safe. Whatever. Um, and when I see them going, I'd like draw a three here and a five here and then start X ping them. Something. So. Blessings upon a loyal warrior. And, so, I mean, I could. Uh, can I, what's the win probability button? The win probability from that high ground push went back to even. And that was pretty much my vibe. That, that felt like where the game got lost. So. Either you had to be with your team or you had to convince your team that Roche was the right play. But going Roche and trying to make it work solo while your team is three-man high grounding, you can't. Um, even if the high ground's the wrong call, if you can't talk them out of it, I think you have to be there. Personally, um, I think OG Ari said it in one of his coaching things with Day9 where he's like, it's better that everyone does the wrong thing instead of like a bunch of people do different right things, if that makes sense, or, or, or whatever. One side does the right thing, one side does. You made the right call to Roche there, but once the majority of your team decide to go high ground, you have to. You just have to go with them, even if it's wrong. Okay, so it's another high ground with no advantage. Um, you have picked off the warlock at least. I'll, I'll give you guys that. So. There is something. Um, so Kunkka, I mean, he's used his stuff. I think he could keep going now. 
you still have like oh you're going the magic damage luna the conda i don't i don't know how i feel about conda especially with the rest of your items that seems very strange to me because everything else here says right clicker and then conda doesn't i might check pro tracker but... go to pro tracker luna are people going conda on this right click build this seems very strange to me It'll take forever to load it. Come on. Why is this so awful? What is? I, I just want to make a quick point. Go to two pro tracker decides to take three minutes to load. Oh, finally. Okay. Um. There are people, yeah, people going like, okay, there's some condas with this build. There, there's one. Okay, there's another. Okay, so it's not entirely unheard of. Uh, it, it, I find it a little bit strange, but hey, okay, if these people are doing it, then it's, yeah. I take it back. Okay. Guess it's fine, and magic damage is okay against whistle. Um, I don't think I agree with coming back here. Sorry, it took me a second to get back my mind to the game, but... So, Brood... This is more info for you, right? Brood Mother is pushing in here. Um, I think you guys are fine to base race a Brood. So now you know, these are the only two people defending, right? This is a 4v2 now. These guys are half health. Broodmother, you now know, is not here. The four of you can base race a Broodmother. Um, I totally disagree. I, I actually think this could be, like, the game losing call. You guys could get racks here. You guys could get both sets of racks here. All you need to do is just turn on your ult and walk up to these guys and BKB so you don't get health swapped. Right? That's all you need to do. Um, and I think this game's a win. But instead, you guys back off with your very good information. Back off and TP back. You guys could have got two sets of racks there. Even if Brood gets all this. Even if, and you, uh, you guys could have just got two sets of racks. So I disagree with this. I think that was like, that was, that, that was really bad. And we'll fast forward. I, I, I think both those mistakes are like map awareness stuff. The two that like seemed really big. So I don't. Oh my god, the the visual bugs, man. This push here, I think you made a, a bad call. This push here, I think you made a bad call. Uh, and both were because of like not being aware of what was going on, on the map. I guess maybe on maybe on the top one you did uh, misclicked your BKB and won't hold that against you. Yeah, you just can't. Your team just doesn't want to rush. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. Okay, this guy's tanking it now. Ulting for Roche is questionable. Because now you have no ult for this. Um, I, just, I, I think you're just forcing Roche. I know, so I don't know how you're doing it, but I think you need to uh, tell your team. Like, because I don't, I, I don't know if you just walked up and started Roche and they're like, ping, ping, ping. Or if you're like, ask me to Roche and you're Roche, let's go. I'd wait until my team happens to be here and then start pinging it so it's like less out of the way and more of them are going to go. Um, but you tried to force it. You nearly died. Then you ulted because it was taking so long. And then you came out of it half health, no ult. Uh, your team had used their shit. Like, th this is bad. <laughs> Um, and that was also a Roche where like the game's even now and there was no once no advantage letting you take Roche for free before back back when your team was going to push high ground you guys could take Roche for free the only way they're going to fight you fight you there is defending here um, I think once getting you to pick off a double damage rune you need some vision like you need something to push that over the edge and make that safe uh, and it wasn't there and you definitely couldn't get your team which is even worse. 
Um, we'll go fast forward through this now. Yeah, I think that's the main point. I, I think, like, none of this... Sh it, it shouldn't have gotten here. So, um, I, I guess the two biggest pieces of advice that I think lost this game are, one, it better, because you had the right sense on the Roches, I think, but it's better for everyone to do the wrong thing than to split your team up trying to do the right thing when people don't want to. Uh, and the other one is map awareness and the idea of, like, information versus urgency, um, knowing when you want to fight and that stuff. Knowing if there's a lot of information on the mini-map, you can make you should be able to make really decisive decisions and you have to get them done right now while you have that information. And when there's no information on the mini map, you, you have to play uh, more passive and because you, any of them could be anywhere you don't know. So you just want to be like under your wards, chilling kind of near teammates, whatever. Um, I, I think that's pretty much it. 45 minutes. Yeah, it will, we'll end it this good enough. Uh, hopefully some of that helped. Uh, I honestly think that that, that advice probably should have helped you at least get to Guardian. Because uh, there, there was a lot of good stuff there. I, I think the two Roches probably ended up throwing. I, I think both Roches you tried to force and your team wasn't there. And it was, the, it was more or less right to Roche. But you couldn't get anyone else on board. Uh, and that's a bit of a comps thing too. But, and, but you just have to know to drop it. So, anyway. Hope that helps.